Hello, I'd like to share with you a program that can benefit every soldier in the Army Reserve. This is Ladder to Success, how every Army Reserve soldier can benefit from the Army Reserve's Competitive Marksmanship Program. The Army Reserve Marksmanship Program was initially started by a chief, former Chief of the Army Reserve, Major General William Sutton. General Sutton was a competitive shooter for his entire life, really, his entire career, uh, when he was with the Texas Guard prior to World War II. He ended up deploying during World War II and found himself in charge of a number of like combat service support type personnel, non-combat arms folks, and quickly realized in the various campaigns he served in that Support personnel need to learn how to use their weapons as well. So he enacted a policy change to ensure that the Army Reserve had published guidance and regulation that a marksmanship program would be there for the training benefit of everyone in the Army Reserve. That guidance can be found in Army Regulation 350-66, which covers the entire Department of Army. And specific to the Army Reserve, Army Regulation 140-1, Chapter 7. An entire, chap uh, entire chapter dedicated to a uh, marksmanship program for Army Reserve soldiers. The intent of the program is to provide a ladder to success. A series of rungs that every soldier can benefit working up based on their level of need, their level of interest. So the first rung, the first step, would be to learn the current standards. Uh, starting in fiscal year 2016, all of the Army training doctrine, formally published in field manuals, uh, were redacted to become training circulars. The base strategy is found in Training Circular 3-20.0, and the qualifications in 3-20.40. Each of the weapon manuals was also changed. So 3-22.9 is now a training circular, not a field manual. Same thing for the handgun manual of 23.35, uh, which will become the 23.17 for the newer M17. And then each of the machine gun manuals as well, same idea. Each of these training circulars has a number of exercises, drills per Appendix D. Those are specifically designed to help you maximize your success during the qualification. It also helps you create a more efficient range day. If you work through the training tables described in this strategy, you will be able to create multiple learning points over the course of time so that when you get out to conduct actual qualification, which is table six, you will have conducted training appropriately. And those training circulars are there to help guide you to do exactly that. Second wrong would be an ability for soldiers to shoot something that takes them beyond mere qualification. And the lowest bar, easiest approach to do that is conducting a postal match. This is also described in Army Regulation. Uh, per AR 140-1. Uh, that URL there is where you can download uh, course of fire book and details for uh, the postal matches on the Army Reserve uh, main website. So the training circulars direct validation exercises to be conducted prior to qualification. These postal matches can serve as that validation exercise. You hold these on uh, current Army ranges using issue Army targets during your normal range conduct. It requires no additional time or resourcing in that you don't have to set up a different range or get different targets. You can do this as a part of the existing uh, sequence that you're supposed to already be doing uh, for um, your qualification. The difference is it adds in a little extra shooting or some different scoring approaches, which can serve as the means to validate that soldiers are ready to pass the qualification on their very first attempt. It also creates an extramural training opportunity in that when soldiers 
choose to submit those scores to the marksmanship program, they can be aggregated together and show how you stacked up against every other unit, every other soldier that submitted the same. So unlike shoulder to shoulder events or things like the best warrior competition, where we have to very expensively send people to a central location to conduct an event, postal matches can be done at the unit's location at the range that they're already paying to go to, but you can add in this next rung up to add in some uh, additional training value, validation for the qualification, and some, some competitive interest. The next rung up is the Excellence in Competition Program, or EIC. This was first conducted in 1884, so it's been around for a while. It makes soldiers eligible for special permanent awards that they can wear on their uniform. Now, this is the next round up because it does require outside coordination. Unlike the postal match, which you can just choose to do and then submit, you will have to first get approval authority from the Army Marksmanship Unit in order uh, to conduct this. The uh, resources avail are available on the Army Reserve uh, Marksmanship site. So this gives you an example of some of what those medals look like. These are in AR670-1. Uh, when you earn leg points or XEIC points for being in the top 10% among your peer group, you get to wear a special marksmanship badge. This is We call these the precious medals versus the tin badges, which is your normal qualification. As you earn additional points, you go from bronze to silver, and then when you leg out, meaning you earn 30 points or more in um, approved excellence and competition events, you wear a gold marksmanship badge indicating that you went distinguished. So EIC matches can be held uh, by units, at least for your first initial four-point uh, leg match, but as you choose to progress, you may want to go to outside events. So you can look for military hosted matches. The Army Reserve, the National Guard, and the active component host these, and these websites uh, will provide information about events as they're coming up. You can contact the Army Reserve, the National Guard Marksmanship Training Center, and the Army Marksmanship Unit about events that they hold. These are hosted for the military, specifically Department of Army soldiers, uh, but there are events that are conducted beyond things that your unit can do. Other opportunities are civilian hosted matches. Now, so service rifle, service pistol type competitions is held by the Civilian Marksmanship Program, which is formerly the Department of Civilian Marksmanship, which was a Department of Army program. And of course, the National Rifle Association publishes rule books for conduct of these events. These are the, some of the oldest American military style uh, shooting events. This predates the train fire approach back when we were doing this on uh, known distance ranges on bullseye targets, etc. There's also action and practical type events uh, and a number of organizations that host all of those. The primary advantage of going to outside events is it's that next rung up. It's a step above what you had been doing. You start at base level with your qualification. You learn how to do that well. You run on a local event for your unit with a postal match, maybe host an EIC match, maybe attend an EIC match hosted elsewhere. And then you look for additional opportunities as out, uh, in the form of outside events. And then the last top rung is if you want to be a Higher level competitive shooter, the Army Reserve Marksmanship Program uh, has folks. It's an additional duty. Uh, you can apply by starting by demonstrating that you're also, in addition to being a good shooter, you have to be an instructor. So host a postal match for your unit. Show that you want to share what you know with other soldiers. And you can do this with your own unit. You want to attend reserve shooting events or other competitive programs outside competitions as discussed previously, and that will demonstrate that you're a higher level shooter by competing in other local events, civilian competitions, etc. You can show the scores that you've earned, classifications that you've earned, leg points that you've earned, and you're basically just demonstrating that you are in fact a true subject matter expert. 
And these websites here give you information about how to uh, go forward about earning a slot on a shooting team. The key idea is that we can enhance retention and readiness by providing a variety of programs. Existing low-cost programs like ensuring you do a good job with your qualification, conducting a postal match, maybe hosting a, an EIC event for your unit are things that require minimal resources but can have a big effect on retaining people. And because it's a soldier relevant skill, it also enhances readiness as well. So thank you for viewing and uh, links to all these programs are in the information below. Thank you.